Thanks. Wow. That's a lot to live up to. But um, yeah, so my name is Jay Anderson, and I am super happy to be here with you guys. Um, it's good to be among our people, right? Um, people who are enthusiastic and excited about uh, doing this thing that we call government. So uh, I'm going to talk to you a little bit today about talking to strangers, and I'm going to start it out kind of light. We're just going to talk about the nature of reality real quick. Um, so who here, is, who here has heard of the parable of the elephant? Anybody? So the, par this is, the story is that these, uh, these five blind men encounter an elephant, and each of them touch a different portion of the elephant, and they come away with entirely different perceptions. So one touches the, the tusk and says, an elephant is some type of spear. Um, one touches the, the, the side of the elephant and says, an elephant is a wall. Um, one touches the, the leg of the elephant and says, an elephant is a, is, is a tree of some sort. And one grabs the, uh, the tail and says, an elephant is some sort of smelly rope. So this, this metaphor is usually given to, uh, to explain that we all, we all have a, a different perception and we, each, we all have a bit of the truth, uh, but nobody really has the full picture. Um, but what I want to say about it is that um, they all share a common perspective. Uh, because I could also tell you that an elephant is 40 pounds and pulses about uh, 25 times a minute and is damp and squishy and, and really messy. Well, of course, I'm talking about the elephant's heart. Now, that's a different, a different perception of the elephant. It's not, where you, it's not something that you would encounter as somebody who just walks up to an elephant. But it's also true from a certain point of view. Um, I like elephants, so I'm just going to hang out on elephants for a while. Um, so if, if you were uh, encountering an elephant by being stepped on by an elephant, suddenly an elephant is very different from the adorable thing, uh, logo for the World Wildlife Fund. Um, an elephant is now uh, the, the foot, specifically the bottom surface of the foot, is all that you care about now when it comes to elephants. Um, your entire experience of elephant will be impacted uh, by, by your experience with this elephant. Yeah, thank you. But this concept, it, it, expand this concept a little bit. So if we talk about eggs, um, what color, or how would you describe an egg? It's brown or blue or white, it's oval, it's hard. And if you smack it on the table, it'll break. If you do smack it on the table, suddenly an egg is something entirely different. Now an egg is a crispy, slimy mess on a table, right? So our experience of these, um, of, of these aspects, or our experience is the reality that, that we, uh, the, the, yeah, sorry. Uh, our, our perception is the, is the reality that we experience. And I want to take it one more time. So what color is an apple? This, you can do this. What color is an apple? Red, green, pink, yellow, right? I am going to say you're all wrong. An apple is almost entirely all white. There are little bits of it that are brown in the middle, the seeds, and the outer surface of the skin, sure, the outer surface of the skin is red or green or yellow, but that outer surface actually informs your whole experience of the apple. It tells you whether it's fresh, it tells you whether it's rotten, it tells you whether it's ripe, um, it tells you whether it's been treated well. Um, if, it's, uh, if the skin is broken or, or uh, a mess, then uh, you're probably not going to buy that apple. So your, your behavior is influenced by your perception of this apple. You think an apple is red, it's almost entirely white. So I want to, take, I want to sort of summarize that, by this, the nature of reality, by saying that your perception and your assumptions create your reality. So what does that mean for those of us who work in government? Um, I want to talk for a little bit about what I call the point of engagement. Uh, some of you who are, who are at the uh, Cartograph ELGL thing in, um, in November or October will remember a little bit about this. Um, and I want to ask, what's the point of engagement? I'm going to ask this a couple of different ways. So what, what are we trying to do? What is the purpose? What's the point of engaging with our citizens? Well, one of my heroes, Jen Palka, who founded Code for America, what's up, Code for America, um, says that government is when we do together what we can't do alone. And that is the simplest, most elegant way of explaining what we do and why we do what we do. Um, and it's, it's really inspiring. I have this on my wall in my office, which is more of a mess than it probably should be after hearing the last talk. Um, but but it, it's an inspiration. But uh, the thing that they lied to us about on SimCity is that it's easy, <laughs> it's easy to build the airports. It's easy to build the skyscrapers, the, the interstate highway, the retention pond. All of that is easy. 
compared to building trust among our community and getting them to work together. Um, trust is actually the, the secret sauce that allows our government to work. And uh, from, from public safety to public works, from, uh, fr from parks to politics, the experiences that citizens have um, when they interact with our city, whether we plan it or not, those inform whether or not they will give us their trust, whether we will be able to earn their trust and to be able to facilitate, as we do as, as government staff, to facilitate the community coming together and accomplishing things that are bigger than any one of us could do alone. But if you think back to why you got into government to begin with, it probably has something to do with solving these big problems and serving our community. But I want to ask you one thing. Does it matter? Does it matter to the citizen if the problem is solved, if they don't know that the problem was solved, or they don't experience an improvement? There may be all sorts of stuff going on inside the elephant. Like, I never knew that elephants have that weird ridge on their back, but it doesn't matter to me if I'm getting my foot stepped on. I don't care where, where the heart is or that there are two bones in the, in the bottom of the leg of the elephant. Um, it, it's the same thing for citizens. The, they may interact with their government in, in different ways, uh, and, but, but all those experiences are an opportunity for us to either build their trust or lose it. So what's the point of engagement? What's the point of engaging with our citizens? To build their trust. So I, let me ask again, what's the point of engagement? What is the location where this, in, where this engagement, this trust building is happening? A lot of times it's this. I've been in 100 rooms like this where decisions are made. This is citizen engagement, version 0 0.6, or whatever we, whatever we inherited. This, this is the citizen engagement model that we've inherited. And it, it, frankly, it frightens me. This is not where I want to live. Um, because there are so many other opportunities for us uh, to, to manage that point of engagement with our citizens. There are, I mean, you think about, yes, social media, obviously, digital stuff, the website, um, citizen requests. Those are points of engagement where citizens are either satisfied or that trust is broken. Um, how do we provide data to them? Do we, do we provide uh, uh, usable and intuitive data visualizations? Do we provide raw data via a data portal? How about a, a community-facing uh, wiki or a knowledge base where we can all share, uh, where city staff can share knowledge and the community can actually participate? What about business zoning and licensing? That's a citizen experience moment that is largely unmanaged. How was your experience today when you signed up to, uh, to have your, your marijuana, your retail marijuana business, or to be, uh, to be a taxi service? Um, surveys, discussion boards, those types of proactive engagements where we reach out to the community. Um, how, do citizens know that their voice is being heard and that decisions are being made based on their input to, the, to our political system? Legislative management, so how do we uh, manage the citizen's experience who wants to be involved but is daunted by an impersonal, uh, illegible uh, set of, uh, of ordinances and resolutions and subsections and clauses. But then even beyond uh, the, the, the digital engagement points that we offer to people, how does a citizen feel when they, when they walk into a park? Is it messy? Do they know where the trash can is? is do they know why the bathroom is closed for the winter? Um, or even neighborhood events or community events. Do citizens know that their city is trying to provide their, uh, trying to provide a, a community that they can interact with? Or do they feel like the city is, is impersonal and they have to do it all for themselves? Now, talking about those physical, those in real life engagement points, I, I also do want to celebrate the, the more digital uh, points of engagement. So we are actually offering, uh, you know, I'm, I'm working on a, a data program for our city. And that's actually the basis for uh, something that we're, we'll talk about a little later on uh, during this, which is the, uh, the city's publishing data into the Ways Connected Citizens program. And, and so we're, we're trying to adopt a strategy of going to where the citizens are already, publishing data into their app, instead of turning something up and saying, come to the city's uh, engagement point. Right? Instead, we take a look at the environment and say, this is, this is a way that we can plug in as the city, as one voice into this um, into navigation, into this, this problem of navigation. Because, um, as, as often occurs, if you do something innovative and incredible, they probably will still hate you for it. 
And, and this is just, uh, this is another aspect that we've just inherited. Um, government has not kept up with serving the citizens how, uh, how, they, how it should. Uh, we haven't kept up with the rest of, uh, of customer service industries. Um, the, and for my money, the best way to fix that is user testing, is actually engaging citizens, pulling them in early and often in the practice of designing the services that we provide to them, and measuring their responses, taking their feedback, and then actually implementing that into the, the programs that we push that, toward them. Um, some of the heroes that I've looked to in this, in this field are uh, Dan O'Neill and Lauren Ellen McCann, uh, who I, I threw my slides out and I'll actually tweet them, so no need to take notes. But, uh, but some of these, uh, some innovators in these fields of citizen engagement have actually paved the way and left milestones for us. So we don't have to reinvent things. Um, now that said, one uh, effort that it's, I'm really enjoying at the city of Colorado Springs is called the Civic Superhero Training. Um, this is where I'm kind of using a superhero metaphor and I'm, I'm putting, uh, by, by putting the, the tools of the city into the hands of the attendees of these sessions, I'm giving them superpowers. So I'm letting them plug into the city's administrative, or the city's uh, legislative program. And I'm uh, teaching them how to use the financial data visualizations that we're providing. And I'm putting those powers into their hands, but then I'm also asking them for input on whatever we're working on at the same time. So whether it's a website redesign or our TV station, I'm, I'm putting powers into their hands and then I'm asking them, now, now on this one in specific, what would you change? How would you change this so that it would be more useful to you? And the uptake from this has been incredible. The citizens that, who have attended these sessions have become the biggest advocates in the community. Um, I've actually had um, one person come back to me and say, we were going for a, a stormwater initiative to raise some money for stormwater and my dad was, um, I'm sorry, we were going for a stormwater an initiative to raise a little bit of taxes. And a citizen who had been to one of these uh, civic superhero trainings came back to me and said, because of what you showed me, I was talking with my dad and he said, uh, the city is this black box and I'm not gonna give them any more money. I pulled this up on my phone, changed my dad's mind right there. He saw, the, he saw financial transparency and he said, you know what, this actually looks like they're being accountable and I'm gonna change my vote. I'm gonna vote for this. Um, yeah, right, <laughs> right? So, um, so what is the point of engagement? Um, the, the why is to build trust with our community. Why are we doing this? To build trust with our community. Where are we doing this? At every point of service to our community. I want to really underline that. The citizen engagement is not a communications thing. It's a process thing. It's throughout our organization. It's, it's how we uh, recognize that we are interacting with our public and designing that interaction point of how we serve them. Um, so this leads us to part three of, of this, uh, this little talk today, um, really getting down to talking to strangers. And I, I thought about this and, and I gave Nick the title of this, this speech, but then talking to strangers just kind of didn't sound like the right, the right phrasing. So um, I changed it to talking with strangers. Okay, that sounds a little better, but uh, often spending a lot of time with strangers isn't the most comfortable thing in the world to do either. So, what I really want to talk about as, as I kind of uh, wrap up a little bit is listening to strangers. Um, because I think, this is, I think this is the most important thing that we can do as government, as government staff, as people who care about the rest of my slides. There we go. There's one, I think. <laughs> because often what we do as city government is take our old mindset and just try to push, push it out there into the digital world and, and uh, you know, often it's just this junk that we throw together or the, the software tool that we have has a, uh, has a citizen facing aspect to it and we just turn that on and say, this is engagement, this is what we're doing. But um, I, I think the, the secret sauce of, what, of where we can take government, where we, how we can innovate with government is actually empathy. And uh, it's, not, it, it's empathy for the citizens who are having to consume our services, but it's also empathy for our frontline staff who are in the, in the jobs that they, uh, who generally want to help the community, um, but they're not, uh, they're not given the, the tools or the training or, or even the, uh, the, the, just the basic permission to be empathetic toward the citizens. And this is the challenge of civic service in a digital age. Uh, how do we make interacting with government feel like calling your buddy up to help you move or giving somebody a high five? How do we turn government from this frightening black box 
into your friends and neighbors who are here to help you. And the great thing is, um, there are uh, organizations who are leading the way and giving us the tools that we need to design with empathy. Um, the, the civic, what are they, what are they called? The civic uh, service, it's out of the city of New York. Uh, they have an actual uh, set of tools that allow you to take this kind of work into your community and do it. It's a civic service design group out of the city of New York. Um, and uh, they've been really impressive, as well as uh, the Sunlight Foundation for, for what I'm doing, for the, the data portal and, and, and tactical data engagement. Uh, the Sunlight Foundation has a whole playbook where you can just adopt, um, adopt some of their practices um, and, and engage with your community in meaningful ways around city data. So if I could leave you with just one thing to never forget, see, because we're back to elephants, um, it's, it's this. The, the work that we do in local government is the most meaningful work that I've ever had the privilege of being able to do. But, it, but performing that work um, doesn't matter. If, the, if, we, if we don't make sure that it, that it lands in a citizen's lap in a way that they can consume it and know that this, this was meant for them and we are their, uh, not just their servants, but their friends and, and, uh, and, and we're, we're helping them uh, solve their problems in a way that, that means something to them. Um, we have a chance to live up to the challenges that are placed in front of us, um, but only by engaging our community can we, uh, can, we, can we earn their trust. And only when we have their trust can we build the future together. So uh, with that, I just thank you for your time.